Joining us to talk more about the interest rate decision and how it may impact the Australian economy is Joshua Melcher, a fellow at the Brookings Institution and a former legal advisor with the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Now, the RBA governor said that today that the growth outlook is below the long-term average. So why kind of this cautious approach, do you think? Well, I think there are a variety of factors playing into the Reserve Bank decision to keep interest rates on hold. I think they're looking at the broader international environment. They're seeing some improvement in the United States economy, which should flow through to the broader global economy. I think also significantly there's been a depreciation in the Australian dollar, around 10% um, over the last couple of weeks, which I think is also going to give a boost to the economy and achieve some of the rebalancing that the Reserve Bank would otherwise have tried to achieve with its interest rates. You're talking about the dollar as it continues to fall. Is there any short-term concerns about that? I think that the question is going to be uh, whether this is a short-term depreciation or whether we're going to see actually a further depreciation. I think that's largely um, going to depend on what we see happening in China over the next period of time. If uh, the growth continues to slow, I think we're going to see a further depreciation. Um, though if that sort of moderates, I think the dollar should strengthen again. Let's talk about that relationship between uh, China and Australia. Uh, Prime Minister, the old Prime Minister, who's now the new Prime Minister, Rudd, said that uh, getting a, a free trade agreement with uh, China is, is one of his top priorities. How important is that? Where is it now? I, mean, I think he described it as a, a camel going across the Sahara looking for water slowly. Uh, it's just not moving very quickly. Is that a good way to describe it? I think characterizing it as slow is probably the most appropriate way of doing it. There's been bilateral negotiations going on for a number of years now. I think significantly um, Australia is also part of the regional comprehensive economic partnership negotiation, which also includes China and a variety of other Southeast Asian countries. Negotiations started only recently, so that's going to be another vehicle, I think, for or try to liberalise trade and investment between the two countries. Significantly, Australia is actually, uh, China is Australia's largest export market, so actually making some headway there, I think it's going to be economically important. How, how quickly do you think that can get done? I don't think any of this is going to get done quickly. I think we're talking two, three years, and that's being ambitious. Um, what about that relationship, though? As, as much as uh, Australia and the leaders uh, like it, uh, a lot of Australians aren't crazy about it. Though. Well, tr China, in many respects, has been an economic boon um, for most of Australia. You, it's important to remember that there's actually a trade surplus that Australia has with China, which is actually quite unusual. I mean, particularly if you think about the significant trade deficit that the United States has with China. Um, there's been a lot of wealth that's been generated by trading with China. So I think overall, um, Australians are better off. Um, there are some concerns um, about investment in some areas of the economy, but I think overall it's a fairly solid and robust relationship. You had mentioned the slowdown in the economy in China. How wary are people in Australia about that? I think very wary. It's clearly become the case that um, the Australian dollar, for instance, is seen indirectly as a bet on the Chinese economy. Uh, the linkage of the Australian economy through trade with China is significant. So I think any um, slowdown in China is going to, through sentiment, but also through economic fundamentals, play through into the Australian economy. Uh, labor, I, I saw this written recently by an analyst who was talking about Rudd's return. Labor has uh, been unable since the 2007 election to deliver policies that actually work. Um, how much pressure is on Rudd to, to really kind of come through when it comes to the economy? I think Clinton termed the uh phrase that it's the economy student, stupid and I think clearly uh, Prime Minister Rudd's um, realised that he, uh, an election campaign focused on economic fundamentals is going to be key to any chance that Labor is going to have success at the next election. And he says they can't keep all the eggs in one basket. How do you diversify? Well, Australia already has a fairly diversified trading relationship. I mean, while it is significant with China, it's also very significant with other key economies such as the United States, Japan, South Korea, growing with India, where there's potentially a lot of upside as that country urbanises and demand for raw uh, materials increases, something that Australia sells a lot of. And through pursuing um, you know, an ambitious trade agenda through the World Trade Organisation, but also bilaterally, it can help to diversify further. Joshua, thanks so much for coming in. So Pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot.